What's going on, Mitchell Renz? Tom Downey. You're watching our NFL Draft Mailbag. Aaron, he's going to hit us with a question. Where will Jalen Hurts go? <sighs> Third round? Third to fourth round. I think Will Greer range is where he ends up going. I think that's the right range for Jalen for Jalen Hurts. You'll probably hear some Taysom Hill talk around him at some point. I'm still, by the way, as an aside, because I think this fits, trying to figure out who's the crappy quarterback that gets round one hype like the week before or two weeks before the NFL draft. There's always been one. Last year, it was Will Greer. Like, he's going to go round one. And I'm like, guys, no, he's not. He went in round three. He either falls late round three or early day four. I think Jake Fromm or Jalen Hurts are the, are the guys this year. Maybe maybe it'll actually end up being Anthony Gordon, who I, who I do kind of like. Aaron, get a picture. What up, Harry? Appreciate the question. Make sure that you guys are using hashtag draft to get on the show. Which team is most likely to leave the first round for more picks? The 49ers have no second, no third, and no fourth. They need more assets. If there's not an impact player that they like on the board at 31, they are going to trade down. Also Seattle, because they always do. Winston Shan found Tom's vinegar strokes here. Uh, are you worried about Antoine Winfield's size as a strong safety for the Cowboys? One day we'll buy Tom a Downey 69 Cowboys jersey. I, that is a fair concern because he's not that big. Where do you get these pictures? These screenshots on. That's not that hard. Look, I, I've, I've come across worse ones when like I randomly pause on a video of myself. They're kind of hilarious. Um, that's a fair concern, but Winfield does play big bigger than his size is listed at now. I think the injuries are also kind of inevitably intertwined with that. But I, I am willing to acknowledge that concern and still say it's a worthwhile pick. Probably more in round two. I else. can't take you seriously with this picture up on screen. King, what up, dude? Raiders should trade into the second round of this draft if Lamb or Judy are gone by 12. I actually don't mind the idea that of the Raiders sense. trading back. However, if the Raiders need a wide receiver and you miss out in free agency, I'm okay then taking Henry Ruggs yeah, at pick I number 12. I, I don't, I don't I'd be mind. more – if the Raiders are going to trade out, I think it's at 19. I, I agree. I, I think a 19 trade down for Las Vegas makes more sense than a 12 trade down does. Las Vegas, he yeah, did it. Yeah, I know. I did it right. Use hashtag draft to get your questions here on NFL Daily. If I misspeak, I'm sorry. If you uh, don't have a picture, if you're over 21, take a drink. All right, Harry, you're getting some uh, limelight today. How many wide receivers will go in the first round? Over, under at five and a half. Because I, I think I feel pretty good declaring. I'm going four. Rugs, Judy, and Lamb are locks to go in round one. Yep. So then you're picking out some combination of T. Higgins, Correct. LaVisca Chenault, Justin Jefferson, Jalen Rager, and I'm definitely forgetting one other guy that I want now, to Now, obviously, mention, if one of those um, players lights up the, the combine, that can change my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think, though, because of the wide receiver class is so deep, you're going to see some of these other players start to fall a little bit. So I'm still going to go that's, for it. That's a fair concern. Mel Kuyper the other day said that 30 receivers were going to go on the in the first three rounds. There's no way. There's no way. The average the past couple drafts has been 33. It, it's, a, it's a historically strong class, but uh, they're not going to go 30. In, in 25 to 30 is what he said. So you can use 30. hashtag draft or you can super chat. It's like the Popos did. Cowboys to get McKinney, so Xavier McKinney, and Diggs first and second. I think that route would – it is possible. Trevon Diggs has kind of slid down some of the – were connected deeply within the NFL circle mock drafts, and I wonder if – I have got some speed concerns with him. Okay. I kind of wonder what he's going to measure at in terms of the 40. That's kind of a, at least a noteworthy deal for me. It is possible. I just don't – think you're going to see Diggs fall out of the top 50. I think someone pulls a trigger on him, but it's the NFL draft. Surprises happen. Appreciate the super chat, the popos. Let's go to Mike Hawk. <laughs> what should Redskins do with their third pick? Cornerback, wide receiver, or tight end? It depends on, I guess, what you do in free agency. <laughs> there, I think there could be some tight ends worth taking. If Quentin Dunbar's still on your team, maybe, maybe you don't go corner if he's gone. That makes a lot of sense. In terms of most likely to have value, I think receiver might be your, your safest bet of those three. Let's go to Yanis Lee, get a picture. What do you think of the new postseason rules that they so, announced today? Just context here. Of course, we're filming this Wednesday night, so who knows what will have happened by the time this video is available on demand. Just background there. They haven't announced anything. 
There, there is nothing official yet for the NFL and the postseason rules. What the current CBA proposal being traded back and forth between the NFL and the NFLPA is expanding the number of postseason teams to seven for the AFC and the NFC, not from six, not from just the six. Of course, that would also accompany a 17-game schedule. I don't mind it. Look, it adds more playoff games. You get another team in. I, I don't really see any harm in it. And I get more playoff football. So if it does end up going down that ro- that way, sure, why not? I get more more football. Yeah, let's appreciate the question. Okay, now we're going to get some debate time. So I'll get your votes in here. you got to pick a running back, DeAndre Swift, type S, or J.K. Dobbins, type D. This is really tough for me. Um, th- I love both of these players. They're my top two running backs. I haven't made up my mind here yet. DeAndre Swift gives you a little bit more juice in terms of of his just athleticism. Not that J.K. Dobbins is a bad one, but there's a little bit more with DeAndre. I like both of them in the passing game, even to the same extent of, say, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who's just dynamic in that regard. But Dobbins' vision is, it is so good. Like, he he just finds holes that aren't there. So here's how I'll answer this question. If I've got a worse offensive line, give me Dobbins because Dobbins is going to help maximize if it's not blocked that well. Okay. If it is, if I've got a good offensive line, give me Swift because he offers a little bit more game-breaking ability than I think Dobbins does. But I don't think you can go wrong here. And whichever one goes second is the one I want because I'm spending a less premium pick on it. So S for Swift or type D for J.K. Dobbins. Okay, bet the aside, they're the internet's number one sports book. And I'm telling you all right now to go bet on XFL games, go bet on MLB, go bet on NBA at chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code NFL120, gets you 120% deposit bonus. So if you put down $100, they will give you $120 for free. They have hooked us up with the best deal on the internet. And everyone who's watching right now, I challenge you to find a better deal out there. Let's go to the next question. You're rolling in here from Douglas Anderson. Get a picture. If Tua is available at five and Dolphins pass on him, who should they select with the fifth, 18th, and 26th pick? I don't think it happens. I mean, well, if Tua flunks his medicals, okay, yeah. Fair. I'll operate under that assumption. So maybe it's Herbert at five. If, if you just don't want to go quarterback, I would strongly consider offensive line at that point. I, I would kind of assume that Jeffrey Okuda is off the board. I, I don't love the edge guys available there. So I'd probably go offensive line at five. I'd be praying a defensive guy at 18, either a corner or hopefully an edge. Epinesa or, or Chasen would be great. And then 26, I'm trying to see who's there. Um, maybe a running back could make sense at that point, or maybe maybe an Austin Jackson. If you didn't go offensive line early, maybe he's on the board at a USC. Let's go to Ante Petrus, the official. Since my Seahawks signed tight end Greg Olson, horrible move, do my Seahawks go after a blocking tight end in the draft, I I no. will say this: giving Greg Olson seven million, it was mind blowing. Yeah, that was, that was a, a little weird to me. Mind blowing. But, hey, look, the Seattle wants to use two tight ends, so it's fine. You have Jacob Hollister, you have Will Disley. You you don't need another tight end if you're Seattle. Disley was a great blocker coming out. If he's healthy, there's your blocking tight end. He brings you off obviously value in the passing game. So I I don't see the need to add a tight end this year for Seattle. I love this next question coming in here. Do you think that Khalil Tate gets drafted? No. No? Why not? He's not good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. He's, He's just fun, not though. good. He's fun. You, you can you can make him a, a undrafted free agent if you want, but he's not playing quarterback, so no. And if I'm going to take a non a quarterback who can't play a position, give me Malcolm Perry instead. Make sure that you guys are using hashtag draft to get your questions on the show. Let's go to Skip Frake. Cowboys need to move up for Javon Kinlaw. I like the fit of Kinlaw in Dallas, but I don't think they need to move up. If you move up for Kinlaw, you're lo- you're probably losing one of your other day two picks. I got a lot of needs if I'm Dallas, and I'm hoping to, and I got to find players who I can play and start that are cheap on their first contracts. I lose one of those guys by trading up for Kinlaw. Frankly, for Dallas, the only guys I'm giving up my second round pick for. Maybe Derek Brown, not sure on that one. Jeffrey Okuda and, and Isaiah Simmons. Those are the guys I'm moving up for. 
Let's go to somebody who I think is a little bit confused with their name because I think you're purple. Uh, let's hope we luck out and get Trevor Lawrence next year. Shout out my boy Mitch. Appreciate it. The only way you're getting Trevor Lawrence. Now, maybe he doesn't have as good of you a year. you got to suck. Justin Fields might be the only other person that you could maybe see go over Lawrence you, next year, and you, that's maybe. you, you got to get a top two pick. Top two so pick. So you better just lose all of your games. Or just Which literally just trade away every single Miami player. Ask Miami how that is easier said than done. So appreciate the question, you Green. Now, we had the most watched online coverage in 2019 of the NFL Draft. So if you love the NFL Draft, and if you want to watch it for free, don't miss out. Hit the subscribe button. The link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We will put it in the description. We will put it in the live chat. And Tom's already been breaking out some of his uh, 2020 NFL mock drafts. You know, and those will continue to go along as well. We will keep you covered on everything around the NFL draft. We did a sleepers video earlier. I feel pretty damn good. This was like in the middle of the college football season, by the way. I feel pretty great about having Anthony Gordon and, and Clyde edwards helaire in there. We'll keep you updated, though, throughout this pre-draft process. Also for the NFL draft, we're ahead of ESPN. So subscribe. Let's go to Gil. What up, Gil? Should the 49ers trade for a safety or draft one in the draft? <laughs> the the simplest solution is actually probably going to be bring back Jimmy Ward on a one-year deal and see what the market looks like in both the draft and the trade market leading up to and even potentially after the NFL draft because you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into one guy with your first pick. If Grant Delpit's there, great, take him. You don't know if that's going to be the case, though. Okay, next question rolling in from Harry. If Tom Brady leaves New England, do they get a quarterback in the draft or free agency? I think they'd at least bring in somebody I in think it'd free be both. agency. It, it probably There's a good chance it would end up being both, both. but I, I think free agency would be their first. Or, or I guess if you include trade market there instead of free agency as well. I, I'll be very curious what the Patriots do if Brady does end up leaving. Well... Speaking of the Patriots, we do have this Patriots sweatshirt and a sweatshirt for every single NFL team. All of our gear that you're about to see on screen. We got t-shirts, hats, jackets, sweatshirts, and so much more. You got to go to chatsports.com slash NFL sale. You can get your favorite team's gear. So shout out who your favorite team is right now in the comments. We got it for you. Up to 50% off. If you want a jersey as well, we have more than just Lamar Jackson jerseys. Any jersey you want to wrap the entire offseason, Show that you love that your team, even in the offseason. It's chatsports.com slash NFL sale. Okay, back into some questions here. Make sure that you guys are using hashtag draft. Which wide receiver is the best possession receiver? I like this question. This is intriguing to me. I guess it depends on how you define what you're looking for in a possession receiver. Can I cheat and say Jerry Judy? Because he's not really a blazer. <laughs> he's fast, but when I think of speed, it's rugs. Well, yeah, but rugs rugs take speed to a whole nother level. Like when I think possession, I'm I'm thinking a, a bigger body guy who's not gonna run in the sub four fives. So Higgins. So I think Higgins fits that category, but he he might be enough of a vertical threat that he doesn't qualify as as a possession guy. I think Brian Edwards out of South Carolina fits that mold really well. I think Michael Pittman out of USC fits that mold. And I think Antonio Gandy-Golden will end up being that guy out of Liberty. Now, he he was a deep threat for Liberty in college. I don't think that's how he translates, though, to the NFL. And I think you could use LaVisca Chenault in a similar way as, as well. But I think he brings a little bit more dynamic ability than to pigeonhole him, if you will, as just a possession guy. Now, not that not that's what you're doing, Durr, but that's kind of how I, I interpret it. When we talk about T. Higgins, let's go to King Higgins. How high could you see Patrick Queen getting drafted? I think it starts with Vegas at number 19. I don't think the Dolphins do it at 18. Dallas doesn't. The Falcons probably don't. Denver doesn't. The Bucks don't. The Colts don't. Then you're back at Vegas 12. There's no way they do it. So I think 19 is probably closer to the ceiling of Patrick Queen, unless maybe a team trades up and wants to get in front of Vegas at 19. That's always an option, too. I saw Barrett B 49 in the comments said, you guys didn't answer my questions. Barrett, I know you watch the show all the time. I'm sorry. There were a lot of questions that came in. Yes, there were. If we missed your questions, you can DM Tom on Twitter. He's at WhatGoingDowny. If you want to DM me on Instagram, I'm at MitchellRens365. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions, but next time... Make sure that you guys continue to use the right hashtags and make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notifications turned on so we can do our best to get your questions here on the show. 